Welcome to another video from the Heart Factory. Welcome to the Heart Factory, Jana. Hello, sir. The first question is What is occlusion test? Yeah. yeah. Today we are uh, seeing about uh, occlusive pumps, that is, roller occlusive pumps. This works on the principle of occlusion. So here the two rollers occludes or compresses the tubing in the raceway and the forward flow is due to the uh, occlusion that is a movement of uh, rollers. And uh, the test is being uh, that there is a certain uh, way of uh, testing how the occlusion is perfect uh, and uh, we will be seeing uh, three methods of uh, testing and this occlusion will help the forward flow of the uh, blood in the CPB circuit. So what is the commonest way of uh, doing the occlusion test? The commonest way of doing occlusion test as far as uh, I know a more commonly used is the meniscus fall method where the uh, fluid column is risen from the pump head to about uh, 40 inches and uh, the pump is stopped and Why 40 inches? The 40 inches is uh, usually the level of the height of the patient who is lying down from the pump head. So the hydrostatic pressure between that level uh, with the circuit should be equal, should be in equilibrium and uh, this will uh, facilitate uh, as you roll the rollers move the rollers corresponding the amount of uh, fluid will be uh, propelled into the patient body what is actually the free fall method the free fall or meniscus fall method is uh, uh, we have to uh, prime the circuit initially the whole circuit is primed with the crystalloid and uh, the, there will be a side line uh, at the outlet of the pump and that meniscus column is uh, risen to about 40 inches above the pump head and uh, the pump is put off the aim is to see or the allow the fall at a rate of about uh, 1 to 1.5 centimeters per minute and this can be adjusted by adjusting the rollers and in the control uh, occlusive uh, control knob on the roller. What are the other ways of doing the occlusion? The second way I can tell you is a dynamic flow method wherein here you can see the occlusion is being uh, tested while the rollers are moving and uh, of course we need a AV shunt that is arterial venous shunt in this which has a one-way valve in that and uh, you will be clamping the line ahead of the shunt and the rollers will be moving at a rate of 5 to 8 rpms and the crystalloid will be moving through the AV shunt with valve and uh, we have to see if the pressure uh, which is monitored is uh, ranging from 250 to 350 millimeters of mercury if that is so then that is correct medium at the rate of 5 to 8 uh, rpms and uh, if that is not the case and uh, if it is uh, only ranging below 250 millimeters of mercury say about 100 or 150 at the rate of 5 to 8 rotation then that is a light occlusion where the uh, fluid will not be flowing uh, forward flow will be affected and the third situation is that the uh, pressure will be more than 350 to 400 uh, at the rate of uh, rotations of uh, 5 to 8 rpms and this is over occlusion this might create hemolysis. So this, this method is called? Uh, dynamic flow method. Is 
Yeah, third method is a pressure fall method and again this is uh, done while the rollers are stopped. Here we have to prime the uh, circuit as usual and a pressure line is required and uh, after de-airing the circuit we have to clamp the outlet line and build the pressure to about 300 to 350 millimeters as it reaches from to 300 to 350 millimeters you stop the pump and watch if the pressure is falling at the rate of uh, 20 millimeters of mercury per minute if that is so then it is normal occlusion in case if it falls more than 2 millimeters of mercury say about 30 or 40 then it is light occlusion it is under occlusion and if the rate of uh, fall is very slow say less than 20 millimeters of mercury say 10 or 5 millimeters then it is hard occlusion this is permanent yeah this is permanent of course yeah, everything is permanent so of the three occlusions in which occlusion test does the pump remain off the pump remains off as i told you in the first and the third case that is uh, uh, meniscus fall method and pressure fall method so in the dynamic method you don't need the pump to be rolling no in the dynamic i'm sorry uh, dynamic method is where it is rolling so which is the method where you don't want the pump to be rolling uh, it is the meniscus fall method and uh, pressure fall method so basically the pressure fall method you keep the pump rolling you don't stop the pressure fall method. no Dyna in free fall method. Yeah, in free fall method, the pumps are stopped. So that is the only situation where you stop the pump. There is another situation also that is the pressure fall method. The second one, what I am saying is dynamic flow method. This is a dynamic flow method where you require a arteriovenous shunt and a, with a valve. And here is what you see: the pumps are rolling at the rate of five to eight so RPMs. So even in the last pressure fall method, also the pumps are rolling at five to eight RPMs. No. no, not in the pressure fall method. Actually, it is a pressure fall method. The initially you the pressure and leave it. Yes, we have to generate the pressure in that. So that is the only one. Pressure. Yeah, as you as the pressure is generated about 300, the pump is stopped. Now, what will happen if the approach is not right? Say, under approach. Yeah, if under approach is not right, then there will not be the forward flow is hindered. What I mean to say is, there will, there will not be any adequate forward flow and uh, the pump display, what you will be seeing is overestimating. I mean to say that the flow display, the numbers what you see is not corresponding to the actual flows which is going into the body. What you mean, suppose you are flowing 4 liters per minute, yeah. the patient is getting 3 liters. Probably. Yes, yes. What are the other problems of under yeah, under, uh, under occlusion, uh, you know, uh, what I mean to say, if the flow is uh, not good, obviously we are uh, under-perfusing. Apart from under -perfusing. Yes. And in case, uh, if you come off bypass naturally, uh, when you put off the pump, you will see the pressures on the monitor falling, the CVP lines are falling. This is a situation where exsanguination is happening. Through the arterial pump, the blood can be exsanguinated. At the same time, if the inline vent line is there in the LV vent, say, and also the cardioplegia is still in line, there also the exsanguination can occur. What I mean is backflow, backward flow will happen. The From the patient, From the patient the into the, the patient off the blood. Yes, off the blood. Usually, we don't require clamping the lines uh, when you put off the pump if it is a normal occlusion uh, but people uh, who are used to will still clamp it what are the problems of over occlusion yeah over occlusion occlusive pump it is again actually you know that it is compressing the tubes and as it compresses the tubes it is compressing the blood in inside the tubes and the amount of compressing should be 
adequate is not too low or too high if it compresses if it compresses more then the rbcs are damaged and hemolysis takes place you can see the urine being colored post operatively this is a one thing and second thing is the spalliation can occur what is spalliation the raceway the segment of the tube what is there inside the raceway is compressed and the plastic particles of that raceway can dislodge and it might clog the oxygenator or sometimes it may create emboliz embolization can happen so of the three methods yes the first method the preferred method will be to prime and clamp the outlet line yes the second method you need to prime and clamp the outlet line yes sir. then the third method does not need any prime no right. no no the third method pressure fall method is again has to be primed in all the three it has to be primed okay. and it has to be clamped as well all three are, all three are primed and all three are clamped are clamped the only difference in the meniscus fall method the one side line is kept open the first uh, the, in the meniscus fall method the side line where you see the uh, level of the fluid falling only in that case that is unclamped it is not clamped it is made to fall under gravity under gravity where while the other things are totally clamped over there so these uh, this solution methods are for uh, half inch tubing ear yes and you want cotton yeah cotton tube may pump it yes irrespective of the size of the tubing the Now, technique is same we do this for suckers and vents as well Yeah. The same method is the same method applicable for suckers and vents as well. Yeah, it is a it is occlusive pump. All the pumps are of the similar types. So all uh, the same. Yes, the mechanism is the same for all the pump. It is all of the roller pumps. Yeah. And uh, what happens? Uh, 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 usually, the all other three pumps are fixed uh, quarter inch tubings, while the main head is. Uh, Uh, the varying tubing uh, based on the you know pediatric size or adult size it will be a half inch or 3/8 inch or it might be 1/4 inch but usually the other pumps sizes are unaffected they are all 1/4 inch and doesn't require much uh, manipulation as compared to the main pump and uh, on a weekly basis or the number of pump runs uh, you can you know follow the same thing the meniscus fall method it is a good and convenient method and it is same time a uh, good method so we need to do this suction test for every pump run or once in a week or how we want the suction test uh as far as i know the first arterial uh, head should be done for every pump run the other things are fixed uh, it can be done on a particular number of pump runs now how do you calibrate the pump yeah uh calibration pump uh, uh, it is done in uh, uh, a certain period of uh, pump runs uh, by the engineer we require what is called as a dial gauge calibrator or a dial gauge tester wherein the engineer keeps a needle uh, uh, about 1 uh, to 2 inches uh, and sets it uh, near the rollers and the rollers are made to rotate and he will see the uh, as the roller touches and moves each roller touches and moves the degree of the movement of the needle shown in the dial should be the same for both calibration is done and this means that the distance between the rollers and the back plate will be equal for both the rollers Fantastic, you know, excellent. Is there anything yeah. else in the future? Yeah, uh, sometimes uh, if you suspect you know, for the cardiotomy and uh, uh, vent while after receiving the lines and connecting before going on bypass, if you suspect that uh, the cardiotomy sucker is not uh, sucking or something like that, we can temporarily occlude it on incrementally. uh by initially telling the scrub sister to uh put the tip of the cardiotomy line on the saline 
bottle or saline bowl and check it by rotating and we will be seeing if it is adequately and continuously sucking and by that way on increment basis we can increase or decrease the amount of occlusion that is one thing and also uh, soon after uh, connecting the tubes in the cardiotomy or vent lines we can run the pump empty without any fluid and by clamping the inlet line and you can watch in the rollers that whether the roll, uh, roller is uh, occluding or uh, compressing the tube the tube there and if it is not you on increment basis increase the uh, occlusion and see if the compression is there and what at one stage it will compress and uh, you may sometimes uh, hear a smacking sound coming from that and this will show that your occlusion is correct so here you will be planting the inflow line inflow line and you increase the occlusion to the extent that you collapse collapse line. yes collapses super so, yeah, thank you very much thank yeah you. thank you yeah if you like this video please click the like button and subscribe to my channel don't forget to ring the bell just to be notified of my next video in time i would really appreciate if you can leave some constructive comments for all of us to learn also keep watching this space for the next video that will appear sometime next week and we'll be detailing about the uses and advantages of the reservoir the oxygenator and the cardioplegia chamber which which will be a continuation of our heartland series thanks for watching thank you